very much, Chairman. Good evening. Welcome to this discussion forum, also from my side. So this evening, we are expected to discuss advances in quantum technologies and uh, what we expect from these advances. And I would like to pick out one particular example where advances in quantum technologies could uh, make really a difference. And uh, this is actually the bottom-up design of unconventional superconductors uh, in magnet superconductor hybrid systems. So this uh, is actually based on earlier work in our group going back 15 years uh, in time on uh, atomic scale spin structures built up atom by atom with the help of a scanning tunneling microscope tip. So we started actually uh, some time ago to build up nanostructures like chains, but also 2D assemblies, for instance, of magnetic atoms like here, iron atoms on a platinum single crystal substrate. And what we can do is we can really predefine the distances between the atoms. We can, of course, also select the species here. We can select the substrates. In this case, we have purposely chosen uh, a substrate where ex we expect high spin orbit coupling. And ha that has an influence, actually, on the spin texture of this chain, because as we will see, we will not have a typical collinear state as we would expect for iron, but uh, we have a non-collinear state. So the beauty is that we cannot only do atom manipulation with the help of a scanning tunneling microscope tip, but we can also perform spin-resolved imaging on the atomic level. So this is the spin-polarized map of that uh, chain of iron atoms, and you see here uh, that uh, there is uh, here a drastic change in intensity of uh, measured spin-related signal. It's, in fact, the spin-resolved tunneling conductance which we measure between the STM tip and this nanostructure. And you see uh, that here the intensity is low, then it gets very bright, then low, then bright. Um, but uh, then you see it's not uh, fully periodic. And if we look at a line section across uh, this chain here, which is uh, plotted here, you see that this is typically a beating pattern resulting from the superposition of two spatial frequencies. Namely, a short period wavelength, which is coming from the end of her magnetic uh, short range coupling. And this is primarily determined by the RKKY interaction between the iron atoms on the platinum substrate mediated by the platinum and a superimposed long wavelength period, obviously. And this is actually due to the interfacial churchinsky maria interaction uh, for that system. Now, the beauty is that we have been mapping out the distance dependence of the RKKY interaction as well as the churchinsky maria interaction uh, independence of the crystallographic directions and uh, as a function of spacings. And so what we could do in the past years is really design such kind of spin spiral states, not only for one-dimensional systems, but we also discovered, for instance, uh, two-dimensional skirmions and ultra-thin films like iron monolayers on iridium and many others. Due to the insight into the atomic scale fundamental interactions like RKKY and uh, Church and Skimuria. So that was very important, of course, and uh, that was actually uh, already here, the topic of a plenary, by the way, at the very nice ICSM conference uh, at that time in 2012. Here you can see the organizer, Ali Genza, <laughs> uh, also attending that meeting. And uh, how did that help in the following? Now, as you all know, there have been beautiful experiences expectations and predictions by theory, uh, actually making use of magnet superconductor hybrid systems to induce novel exciting superconducting states. For instance, topological superconducting states in systems where you have a spiral state, just as you have seen it, but now interacting with an S-wave superconductor. So of course we have to replace platinum by something else like niobium. It was a wonderful uh, prediction, theoretically, because uh, not only the topological superconducting phase was predicted, but also the so-called Majorana states, as I have reported on, on Monday. And so, by atom, by atom manipulation, we could build up these uh, structures here. In this case, manganese chains on a niobium substrate in the superconducting state. 
and we could really map out the predicted zero energy modes here, very well separated from all the finite energy states, which are trivial, and we could even determine the topological nature of the gap structure, and uh, this is seen here. As I explained on Monday, we do this by Bogolyubov quasi particle interference and Fourier transformation afterwards. And so we could really map out for the very first time the in gap band topology uh, inside the gap of a superconductor, really showing extremely nice agreement between the experiment and the theoretical expectation for a topological superconducting state for a quasi one dimensional system and we could even determine the topological gap size. So this is uh, what I reported in detail on Monday, as you know, but there have been many other uh, nice predictions, and I would quickly like to go through, I have limited time. So uh, in 2016, six years ago, the Princeton group of uh, Bernevik made a very nice prediction about a topological superconducting state when you bring ferromagnetic islands in contact with an S-wave superconductor, and you expect then chiral Majorana edge modes along the periphery of these islands. Again, you can do a bottom-up approach and uh, basically realize such a model type system, for instance, by iron monolayer islands on a superconducting rhenium substrate. What you expect is that within the superconducting gap, you have a chiral Majorana edge mode. So if you would look at the edges, uh, you would, uh, of course, expect to see intensity then, of course, which you would not be able to see in the bulk of the island. And this is exactly what you see beautifully here uh, when you map this uh, spectroscopically with the help of the tunneling microscope. Right at Fermi energy, you see this great intensity coming from this Majorana uh, edge mode. You see uh, induced gap here, a full pronounced gap. So the iron island becomes superconducting due to proximity with the rhenium substrate. And you see, of course, how the system develops if, if you go higher in energy towards the coherence peaks uh, of the superconducting rhenium. And there was in beautiful agreement uh, the theory by Dirk Moore and co-workers uh, from Chicago. You can go on and uh, uh, look, for instance, for topological nodal point superconductivity, as has also been theoretically predicted. In this case, you can just uh, go for manganese islands, with ha which have an antiferromagnetic ground state and uh, interacting with a superconducting niobium substrate in this case. And uh, the nodal point superconducting state, which was predicted, is beautifully reflected in the scanning tunneling spectroscopy maps. And you can prove that, actually, by looking at the different signatures of different edges. For an antiferromagnetic island, namely, you have ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic edges, and also this kind uh, of more open ferromagnetic edges. And the different edges show up differently uh, here with different brightness, and you can uh, read this in more detail in this publication. Finally, and uh, this is uh, another beautiful uh, uh, prediction by theory, in this case by Nagaosa and co-workers from Japan, uh, they have predicted that if you bring a spin spiral state uh, in contact in proximity to an S-wave superconductor, you can also create a novel type of unconventional superconducting state, in this case, a P-wave superconductor. And again, this system has been realized now also experimentally by one of my PhD students here. In this case, uh, iron monolayer actually was grown on a superconducting tandem of substrate. Again, of course, it's clear why you have to go from and diobium to tantalum, because tantalum offers higher spin-orbit coupling, so you increase the interfacial DMI, and this leads then to non-collinear ground states, not collinear ferromagnetic states, as you would expect uh, for iron, but really these spin spiral states. So here in the spin-polarized STM image, you can beautifully see these spirals with a period of six nanometers interacting with the superconducting tantalum substrate. So again, a very nice uh, further example of a bottom-up approach. Now this is my final slide, what are the future perspectives? So we are really looking forward now to bottom-up design of something like a high TC superconductor, maybe not yet uh, at the beginning at room temperature, but in a quasi two-dimensional magnet superconductor hybrid systems. So the idea is not to start with very complex materials where the physics uh, might be very complex to describe, but really to have something like a minimal experimental model system and a minimal theoretical model to catch 
the basic uh, physics uh, of, uh, uh, say, such kind of high TC superconductor. So one example of promising model systems uh, would be, for instance, a two-dimensional magnetic layer with antiferromagnetic spin fluctuations, which we can observe experimentally, proximatized uh, on top of a BCS superconducting substrate. This is one of the model systems we are working on. So as I said, there are needs now for minimal theoretical models describing possible enhancements of BCS superconductivity by non-electron phonon mechanisms. Uh, the beauty is, as I showed you these days, for any model type Hamiltonian, we can experimentally realize this from the bottom up, from individual atoms. So the accuracy now for condensed matter systems is exactly the same as for quantum optics. You all know that quantum optical systems, of course, have been used for quantum simulation already for quite some time now. But of course, uh, quantum optical systems are different from condensed matter systems. But now we have the same kind of precision. We can really... Uh, realize any kind of model Hamiltonian, as you have seen by the Kitaev model Hamiltonian, which we can realize now experimentally. So there are really great perspectives, I would say, for theory-guided quantum materials design due to all these advances in quantum technologies and especially in atomic scale technologies, which is what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. <laughs>